Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today's Ultimate Boa Face-Off features two of the heavyweights in the world of locality boas, the Argentine boa and the Peruvian red tail boa. We'll do a head-to-head -head comparison of these two snakes in five different categories and award an individual winner in each category. At the end of the match, the animal with the most individual wins will be the overall winner. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. The first category will be temperament. How handleable and docile is the animal and does it have pet-like qualities? Number two is the husbandry. And animals with easier husbandry that are more forgiving and less difficult to care for will be the winner. Number three is breeding potential. How hard is this animal to breed? Animals which are easier to breed and tend to have larger litters or, an, or babies that are easier to get acclimated will be the winner. The fourth category is the most subjective of the five and that is the looks and the beauty of the animal. And the last category is the popularity and demand. So we want to work with animals that are in demand and have a lot of popularity. So if we produce babies, there'll be lots of people that want to give them homes and add them to their collection. After all, you don't want to breed a lot of boas and not have nowhere for the babies to go. So I'll award an individual winner in each of these categories. And then at the end, the animal with the most individual wins will be declared the overall winner. So get out your scorecards and score along. See if you agree with my picks. And the first category is temperament. Argentine boas have a reputation for being hissy, but it's really just as babies and it's actually just a bluff. All my adults are very docile and laid back. Argentine boas are very handleable and somewhat more responsive to their owners than the Peruvian red tails. Their less muscular bodies than the Peruvian red tails tend to be less squeezy. And overall, they're one of the more mellow locality boas. Peruvian red tails typically start out aggressive as babies and often strike out defensively. This reaction typically subsides in about a year or so, although some do remain aggressive as adults. Peruvian red tails are among the most muscular of the boas and will typically squeeze powerfully around your hand or arm. The winner of round one, the temperament category, is the Argentine boa. Round two, husbandry. Argentine boas are from an environment that's more temperate than most of the other types of boas, uh, so therefore they're more forgiving to temperature and humidity fluctuations. They typically eat like pigs on an assortment of different rodents and birds with no difficulty getting them started as babies. Regurgitation of food is very rare and does not typically happen in Argentine boas unless there's some kind of underlying health condition. In general, Peruvian red tails require more controlled environmental conditions than Argentine boas, and you really want to keep the temperature in the 75 to 90 degree range and the humidity in the 60 to 80 percent range in order to avoid problems with husbandry. They are easy to get feeding as babies, and they're not as prone to regurgitation as many other types of red tails like the Surinams, although it does happen. Although they're not difficult captives overall, in general, they're a little less forgiving than the Argentine boas. The winner of the husbandry category is Argentine boa. That's two wins for the Argentine boa, zero wins for the Peruvian red tail. The next category is breeding potential. Argentine boas are fairly straightforward to breed, at least compared to true red tail boas, and tend to be more of a formula breeding uh, species. That is, you follow a series of steps and you're likely to get a successful litter. They should be, typically be at least four feet long for a male to breed and about six feet or so for a female to breed. So it typically takes about four years for the males to get to breeding size and about five years for the females. Argentine boas typically have large litter sizes of up to around 60 babies with a typical litter somewhere between 10 and 30 uh, babies in number. The baby boas in the, of the Argentine are large and typically easy to get to feed. Like other true red tail boas, Peruvian red tails are less straightforward to breed. You can do everything right and still not be successful. It's really less of a formula species like the Argentine boa.
The size and age at first breed breeding for Peruvian red tails is similar to that of Argentine boas. However, since true red tail boas generally grow a bit slower, it could take an additional year. Peruvian red tails are among the largest babies at birth and often approach two feet in length. The litters tend to be smaller than Argentine boas, typically anywhere from five to about 20 babies with an average of about 12. The babies typically will eat very easily, but they can regurgitate if fed too often or fed uh, prey items that are too large. So in general, it's a little harder for them to get acclimated. The Argentine boa wins in the breeding potential category. So that's three wins for the Argentine boa, zero wins for the Peruvian red tail boa. The next category is the most subjective, and that is the looks and beauty of the animal. So both of these animals are very beautiful and very impressive to look at, so it's definitely hard to pick a winner in this category. Argentine boas have this beautiful dark coloration with a reduced saddle structure forming an almost linear or reticulated pattern. Notably, they have these half circle markings on their side in many cases. They can be a deep blue black or a dark chocolatey mocha in background color with white or creamy off-white to beige markings. As babies, they have lots of pink markings, but tend to lose the pink as they grow, except in the max pink bloodline animals, which have been selectively bred to retain the pink coloration into adulthood. They have a very muscular body, but in general, they're more slender and less muscular than other types of boas, such as the Peruvian red tail. Peruvian red tails are famous for their beautiful gold and yellow background color. Saddles are typically non-peaked, often thin and bowtie shaped, or even aberrant, but saddles can be peaked. They have a beautiful bright to deep red tail, which contrasts nicely with the golden brown body color. Peruvian red tails have wedge-shaped triangular heads, which often have beautiful markings, and they likely have the most graceful head shape of any boa. So the winner in the looks and beauty category is the Peruvian red tail boa. That's three wins for the Argentine boa, one win for the Peruvian red tail. And the final category is the demand and the popularity. So if you're gonna be working with a boa and breeding them, you're going to want to pick an animal that's popular and has a high demand for. Otherwise, you're going to be caring for a lot of baby boas for a very long time. So the Argentine boa has seen a huge surge in popularity in the last few years, with prices skyrocketing as the supply plummets and the demand escalates. In the past, there have been periods where Argentine boas were not very popular, especially compared to the true red tails. But perhaps this time these underrated boas will finally remain in the limelight where they deserve to be for good. Peruvian red tails have always been extremely popular and highly sought after among boa constrictor aficionados. Their prices have risen steadily over the last few decades. Demand remains very high and the supply remains quite low due to their low reproductive potential. Due to the low supply and high demand, they're among the most expensive of the locality boas and will likely stay that way for the foreseeable future. The winner in the demand and popularity category is the Peruvian red tail. So this brings us to the end of the match. With three wins to two, the Argentine boa is the overall winner versus the Peruvian red tail. Of course, this is an extremely close match and both of these animals should be viewed, rightly so, as the crown jewels of any locality boa collection fortunate enough to have them among their midst. So now look at your scorecards and let me know in the comments below if you agree with my scoring or how you would have scored differently. Also I'd like to hear what you think of this new video format and if you have any recommendations for future head-to-head -head boa comparisons that you would like to see, please comment below. I hope this video was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me on social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.